Good afternoon. So you guys get to listen to me for the next 20 minutes while you're eating lunch. I hope I don't bore you too much. But uh, uh, if there's questions on anything I'm talking about, please feel free to jump in. Try to make this as interactive as possible. So Centrelink, um, I'm sure those of you uh, in the Seattle marketplace are relatively familiar with Centrelink. Um, networking company first and foremost, uh, our CEO will tell you that every day of the week. Um, but it, as part of our Internet of Things strategy, we had to, we had to come up with a go-to-market strategy around how we approach what we term our smart solutions practice, right? As part of the smart solutions practice, we focus on a number of different areas, uh, smart cities, uh, smart hospitality, uh, and obviously smart venue, which is uh, stadiums and arenas. And that's really where I, I fit in. I've uh, been doing this for now almost 11 years in the uh, stadium uh, and arena space. So uh, talk to you a little bit about that, what our go-to-market strategy is, some of the things that we've done. And again, if there's questions, please feel free to jump in. So really, host of Centrelink, what, it, what, what do we do, right? Um, talked about um, our world-class IP uh, network, right? That's what we're known for, and that's probably what everybody uh, understands us for and, and what, what's our, what our core competency is. But aside from all that, especially when you're talking about venues uh, and, and other things, uh, you know, these are other things that uh, are, are required. Low-voltage cabling, routing switching, uh, wireless connectivity, all the way through to uh, CRM and data analytics, right? So we have, uh, we have the ability to provide solutions around all of those, right? Uh, I'll caveat that with this. Uh, Centrelink, we do not manufacture anything. Uh, so we rely on our partners uh, for a lot of these things. Uh, so we take a vendor agnostic approach, uh, and we consider ourselves kind of like the general contractor of IT um, as we go to market. Um, and then obviously on top of that, we provide program management services, right? So that can be anything from consulting, uh, RFP uh, drafting, uh, all the way through to managing uh, the, the solution after it's been implemented. Uh, so that's kind of where, where, we, where we fit in. Uh, again, we bring a best of breed solutions. We rely on our partners. Uh, and these are some of the partners that we've worked with over the past. Um, but again, we take a vendor agnostic approach. We want to make sure we're building our portfolio to match what the market is asking for, right? Um, so as, as we approach these new stadiums and arenas and then also retrofit some of these old ones, you know, these are some of the solutions and partners that we're bringing to the table. So here's our view on uh, what a smart venue architecture looks like. And, and again, you know, our core competency comes around the network, right? Uh, the really the brains of, of, of the venue, right? So that's where we start. Uh, we, we've been doing that business for 85 years uh, within Centrelink. So uh, not, for, not for just um, uh, our, own, our own company, but as for, as for other businesses as well. Uh, and this really came to be about, about uh, 10 years ago when we were approached by the uh, Minnesota Twins they were building out a new stadium, and, and we had a partnership with them. And you know, they came to us and approached us on a whole uh, line of uh, networking stuff, powering their internet circuits, uh, that kind of stuff, powering, powering the building. And I went to our, our senior leadership team, and I said, you know what? We do the networking stuff for businesses and ourselves every single day. Why can't we do it inside of a large stadium? And they said, well, geez, yes, that sounds like a great idea. Why don't you go make it happen? So. I took that and ran with it, and we were able to make that a very successful implementation. So where did that come along? It came along with, obviously, a, a land infrastructure, right? Again, core competency. Um, but if that's not uh, powerful enough and that's not enabling uh, for other technologies to come onto the network, uh, you're going to have a lot of issues, right? And then what we focused on was Wi-Fi. And back then, Wi-Fi was kind of a newer technology. There, was no, there were no high-density deployments uh, to date at that time. So. That was an interesting one um, for us, uh, but we were able to deliver what the twins thought was a, a very good um, fan experience at the time, uh, even dating back you know, five, six years ago. So, um, and then focusing on the common applications and how do we uh, integrate them uh, onto the network, right? So CRM, again, uh, some of those things that drive fan experience, uh, in-seat ordering, uh, ERP payroll, ticketing, parketing, all those things that really make it what we call a smart venue, right? Um, and then on the back side of that, you know, how do we congregate all of that data, bring it into a data warehouse, data lake, and then turn it into data that these teams uh, can use and, and market to their fan base, right? Uh, and providing real-time uh, and predictive analytics. So that's really kind of our high-level story, right? We start, with, we start from the bottom and work our way up the stack. Um, and again, focus on our key partners to help us get there. So fan experience capabilities, right? Um, when you look at uh, patrons that come to different venues, 
these are the ways that we see the venues interacting with their, their fan base, right? And so these are what, these are what the, the patrons are from, from we're seeing. So IPTV, and I'll talk a little bit about each one of these. Wi-Fi, obviously, uh, mobile apps, splash pages, uh, fan walls and kiosks, uh, and then obviously the analytic on, on the back of that. Uh, there are a couple other things that, that are out on the market and that interact with, uh, I will call them ancillary things that kind of parlay into some of these things, but these are, in my mind, uh, the platforms in which you interact with them. So for those of you not familiar, uh, let's start with IPTV, IPTV digital signage. Uh, in today's day and age, there's an expectation around what uh, the experience is around advertising to your patrons, right? And this, the days of static advertising are gone. Um, you know, there's, there's still, a, a, I guess, a small presence there, but for the most part, everything's turning, coming to the digital world. And that's been, that really aligns with uh, CenturyLink's message, right, is, is, is empowering that digital world, right? So we work with teams to, to bring on, uh, provide an IPTV type solution. That's a, a, a network solution where all the displays are on a single network and being driven from one central control center, right? Um, it obviously allows you to create zones uh, within uh, each display. So region one, for example, would be content of the game or something along those lines. Region two could be a social media feed uh, that uh, your, your patrons are engaging in. And uh, region three can be uh, trafficking, scores, uh, different types of um, uh, um, fantasy applications, something along those lines, right? So all being controlled from one, one central place. So fans are expecting to see this kind of things. And, and the idea here is, is that the, the content is what's key here. And this is how teams monetize this platform. IPTV is just a platform, but how do we monetize that, right? So I've seen teams that will take, uh, take a, a, the content piece and say, you know what, we've got, we've got the content uh, staff in-house, the expertise in-house to really create this, we'll run with it. And you know, unfortunately, they don't get, they don't get the ROI that, they've ex that they would expect on an, on an investment like this. Other teams have done it right and, and uh, partnered up with uh, specialized companies that do content development and really brought forth the right partners and advertising schemes to market to their fan base based on research that they've done. And they've gotten returns on investment in the, in the two to two and a half year range on a platform such as like this, which is, which is obviously a, a, a very key or very fast ROI. So if you do this right and monetize the platform, you can get a good ROI. And obviously it's a great way to advertise with your fan base. Venue applications. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, there's all kinds of stats out there around application, mobile app adoption, those types of things. And depending on what vertical you're in, whether it's NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, MLS, even colleges, you know, the adoption rates are different, right? Uh, so there's always a need out there to create a, uh, I would suggest there's always a need out there to create a venue app. That's probably one of the biggest ways to in interact with your fan base, right? Everybody's got that mobile device, that smartphone, as well as other devices that are gonna be coming online here. So if you don't have some, some sort of app that they can download and interact with, you're gonna be losing out a lot on a lot of data and ways to interact with, with your patrons. Um, another way that we combat this uh, is, is really creating a splash page. So when you jump on a Wi-Fi network, uh, a, lot of, a lot of them will have a, a static splash page and it asks for your email address or your social handle, social media handle to log in. We've taken a different approach and really tried to create and mirror uh, what the, your mobile app looks like. Okay, so that splash page, it becomes an HTML5 based splash page and it creates a mobile experience for your patrons. So even though they're not downloading your mobile app and utilizing that, you're still able to provide them content and push them to places that you wanna drive them to and again, collect data on the back end of that. So um, we, we kind of take a, a two pronged approach in delivering venue uh, applications. Uh, again, CenturyLink has the capabilities to develop a lot of these in-house. Um, we also look to partners to develop a lot of the forward-facing mobile apps that are out there in the marketplace today. Uh, where we come into play is on the back end. We are really good at that integration piece, right? So how do we bring all of those data points together, right? You see in the bottom, parking, food and beverage, port of sale again. How do we bring all of that together um, and, and start collecting that data and providing it back to the team and or the venue in terms in which they can use it and drive, drive revenue? Obviously, context-aware solutions solve a number of different challenges, right? You guys are all aware of all this, right? So the idea is, is we want to start driving, driving patterns, traffic patterns within the venue. We want to be able to push them to certain places based on um, 
skill sets, concession stands that are, that, are, that are available, different things that might be going on within the venue, um, loyalty programs, buying history, all that kind of stuff, right? In increase that on-site engagement. We want to get them there earlier and keep them there later so that they're spending more money, right? Uh, obviously, drive, the, drive the, the adaption of these platforms as well as giving a seamless uh, experience uh, and wayfinding mechanisms, right? Wayfinding is a, a key one. So this is a sample of uh, kind of our venue app architecture and how we do it. I'm not going to spend a ton of time here. Uh, but obviously, again, going back to the integration side, right? So this example here, we, we integrate it with Funware on the back end, right? So um, they, 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 do, they, did, they created all of the mobile marketing and all of the wayfinding mechanisms and all that kind of stuff. We created the application management uh, platform on the back end. And we're also doing the uh, reporting via the web portal as well as the um, uh, analytics uh, from from that mobile app, right? So that's ideally how we want to do it. Um, and again, the integration going back to that, that's that's where we come in, come in key. Uh, so again, uh, fan experience and video walls, uh, not as prominent in NFL venues, uh, but uh, more along the lines of NBA and NHL venues. Uh, you're starting to see these more and more. Uh, they'll place these in the the entrance ways, uh, all the all the main gates, uh, other venue, and it's. Highly interactive, right? So you, you, can, be, you can make it 3D. Uh, you can make it a touch screen if you want. Um, it, it all depends on what the venue is looking to do as far as interacting with their patrons. But it's, obviously, it draws a crowd. Um, and it's, 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 it's a mechanism of wayfinding, right? So if, if you don't know where, where you're at in the venue, you don't know where your seat is, you don't know where the concession stand is, those, those types of things, it's a way to push, push people that way as well as sell other alternatives, right? You can be advertising different events within the venue and offer a way to purchase tickets, that kind of stuff. So uh, this, is a, this is one that we, um, we've seen a lot of, uh, in, a lot of uh, traction with. Uh, we'll be deploying uh, uh, quite a few of these coming up. The other key one in here is this does integrate in with uh, your IPTV strategy, right? So if you've got an IP solution already in place, uh, we can provide this fan wall and integrate it with your, your existing uh, IPTV platform. The other thing is uh, digital signage kiosks, right? So you see these in a number of uh, different venues. Um, you see them out in cities and districts as well. So kiosks, right? Uh, sounds pretty simple. Uh, the example I like to use is an airport. Uh, airports, pretty, uh, they adopted these early. So again, highly interactive, 3D, can be touch screen if they want. Um, kiosks, which provide another ways, uh, other ways to advertise uh, to your fan base, ticketing again, wayfinding, uh, all those types of things. But it's just one of those those unique unique things that provide an environment for your patrons that they wouldn't get elsewhere. Uh, data analytics, uh, again, another topic that I could probably sit up here and talk about for uh, a number of days. Um, you know, there's a number of different ways to address it. And, and I think there's, there's, there's a good marketplace out there for analytics. And in, uh, I don't think anybody's really cornered uh, the marketplace. Everybody's got niche offerings here. Everybody says they can do it. Uh, I have yet to see a team that's been completely satisfied with the decisions they made around uh, the, the analytics. But obviously, what you want to do is understand, right? Understand your fans and guests, right? So um, loyalty programs are a big one, right? So everybody's trying to figure out how do we keep our, our most loyal fan base? Uh, how do we keep them loyal? How do we keep selling to them and, and, and enhancing their experience, right? Um, so one of those ways, obviously, is analytics, right? Understanding, again, who they are, via, whether it's via mobile app, whether it's via uh, other means, right? You've got a CRM platform that you've probably been utilizing. You know, it's bringing all that data together and saying, Here, here's, here's who they are, here's, how, here's what they like, and here's how we should be interacting with them, right? Um, products and value-added services, same type of thing, right? It, it's, it's which products and services are most popular, which, which, by which venue, which, which, which venue's been doing what better than the other, and how do we extrapolate that and, and deploy it here? And then venue, venues uh, and events, right? So operational efficiencies. Um, we want to we bring everything, and I'll give a couple of examples here in just a, just a minute, but bringing everything on the network so that can be monitored and maintained. Uh, lighting, for example, right? So, Lighting, not just putting in LED lighting as a cost savings, but bringing it on network. Maybe it's PoE, uh, power over Ethernet LED lighting, right? So now it's on network, and now it's constantly being monitored. And we can, just, we can de deploy, pe deploy technicians to service them only if there's an outage, right? And we know about it, so we're not sending people around and wasting time. 
um, different types of efficiencies uh, that we can bring to scale um, based on analytics for, for these venues. Um, this just shows kind of what our, what our data platform is. Uh, so we use a, a Hadoop platform. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with, with Hadoop. Um, what, what we do on the, on the again, wh where we're key from an analytics standpoint is our analytics uh, platform, it's, it's really customized. So we don't have an out-of-box product. We actually develop use cases based on actual need of either the venue or the team. And then after that, we turn around and provide uh, reporting and, and predict predictive analytics uh, visualization. And that's all done via pretty much a mobile app. So for the example I got here is we've worked with the team, and they came up with several different use cases. And we, we developed a, a ways that uh, a mobile app that is downloadable on uh, iPad or Surface in which, like for example, the ownership wants to understand when suites are being sold and when to adjust prices to sell suites. And he's able to click on that app and get real-time information based on the analytics that we're providing. Marketing doesn't, want to, doesn't care so much about that. Um, they're more along the lines of our partners, are, are, are they generating the revenue that they need to continue to re, renew uh, with us uh, from a partnership standpoint? So we created a use case around that. And what keeps those partners coming back, right? Is it, is it performance on the field? Um, or is it uh, the fact that we're out signing free agents? Or um, you know, th those types of things. And what happens when we're, we're not the best team out there and we're not making the playoffs? You know, how long do we have to keep those partners around? Or should we be focusing on other partners? So those types of things is, are some of the things that we're doing uh, with the team right now. And again, uh, the, the biggest highlight there for us was around the visualization uh, of it. Here's a, that, that example use case, right? So everybody's all about season ticket retention, ticket holder retention, right? So this is, this is the use case that we developed for uh, that team I was talking about. And again, talk is about winning percentage, postseason results, payroll, uh, those types of things, right? ROI is key. Um, again, our, our message is, you know, we have these platforms. Uh, you, you've got to make investments in these platforms. Uh, you talk about LAN, you talk about Wi-Fi, you talk about IPTV. Those are all platforms, but how do you drive ROI on those particular platforms? How do we monetize those investments, right? Uh, those are things that we, we, we like to say we bring to the table and we do a good job. Um, you know, it's, it's what can we place on top of those things to drive revenue and engage more with your, your, your patrons. Again, Centrelink, trusted partner, right? Uh, again, we take that vendor agnostic approach. Um, you know, as, as cliche as it sounds to say, we, we kind of have a niche into everything. Um, I, I will tell you, our, our core cornerstone is, again, the infrastructure, right? That's what we do first and foremost. That's what we do best. Um, but, but we do have solutions around all these other things. And again, it's via our partners, right? We're always looking to um, update and, and um, um, broaden our portfolio uh, based on what the market drives, right? So we'll continue to evolve and work with different partners and, and bring, bring to bear, um, you go to market uh, with, with, with what the market drives. So, um, you know, again, based on this, you know, Centrelink's trying to transform ourselves as a business a little bit, right? Um, we've, we've developed a couple of different technology centers, and we actually have a cloud development center actually right here in Seattle. Um, so as part of these, what we do is we like to actually fly our, our prospective customers and current customers in and really walk them through and, and give them kind of a, a day in the life of Centrelink, right? Outside of what you already know, outside of just networks, right? We want to talk about... Um, you know, how, we, how we've innovated and what our go-to-market strategy is around some of these new things, right? Not just smart venue, but smart lighting, smart city applications, uh, those types of things. Those are all big buzzwords that are out there right now. And again, I think the market is, is, is very, it's, it's, a, it's a great spot to be in. And, and we've got to have a, a philosophy on how we move forward and, and attack those marketplaces. So again, um, as with some of these venues, they're not just venues anymore. Uh, I'll use an example coming up here. It's, it's now become a district, right? Um, how, do we get, how do we get people down to not just the venue, but into the area and spending time there 365 days a year, not just on event day? And so they've created these districts, right? And as part of those smart district offerings, you got to be able to, uh, to really me mesh everything together, right? So CenturyLink has, has got a number of different offerings around smart traffic, parking, public safety, lighting, waste management, environmental monitoring, right? 
all powered by our network. Um, that's, that's usually the key is, is that's what gets our foot in the door in some of these is, is we've, we've got our network services already there. We should be looking at some of these, these uh, alternative situations, right? And all of this is API integration on the back end. So you wonder about where we're doing a lot of these things. And I'll talk to you about some of these, these projects um, in, in, in what we're doing and, and why we've had success there. So obviously CenturyLink Field, our, our, our home here in Seattle, our friends at the Seattle Seahawks. Um, we, you guys probably have heard we just re renewed our naming rights lease. So we are going to be a partner of the Seahawks and CenturyLink Field for, for quite, quite a number of years going forward. And we couldn't be prouder of it. It is, it is a great relationship for us. It is a great uh, facility for us and, and we are very happy to be a part of it. Um, so what we do for the Seahawks, uh, and we work hand in hand with Chip Suttles, uh, their CTO, um, and his team, and they are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, very smart individuals, and they've got a lot of great ideas on how to continually improve this venue. And so obviously we want to work hand in hand with them and bring, bring to them uh, the right solutions, right? So we do a lot of consulting with them. Uh, you know, we sit on the same side of the table uh, as they do, and we help uh, bring to light different technologies and different partners that we might be able to utilize in deploying some of these things, right? Uh, after we've, we've figured out uh, what a solution might look like, um, we've done some RFP drafting. Uh, so we'll take that to the market and we'll help narrow down the scope of, of uh, vendors that are out there and say, you know, we've settled on these and, you know, let's, let's make a decision, an educated decision going forward. Uh, integration services, right? So, a venue like this obviously has a lot of different, um, a lot of different things. So we help them with integration on the back end. Um, and then currently today, as a matter of fact, we're turning it up uh, today. So if you guys pick up a telephone, we're doing an IP telephony system cut over. Uh, if you guys pick up a telephone, it doesn't work. Don't call me. Call Chip. But uh, we're, we're actually uh, we're currently uh, deploying a new IP telephony system uh, for all of CenturyLink Field as well. And then we uh, provide some uh, game day or event support uh, for, for some of those platforms. So uh, some of the things that we're doing here uh, at CenturyLink Field and with the Seahawks. Uh, currently working with our friends in Detroit. Uh, there's a project in Detroit. It's called District Detroit. Uh, it's a, for those of you not familiar with the project, um, the Illich family has procured um, 50 blocks within downtown Detroit. And they are currently building out uh, a district there. It is going to be a multi-purpose district with uh, retail, consumer, housing, um, shopping, all of that kind of stuff, uh, business presence. Um, and phase one of that was Little Caesars Arena, which is going to be the home of the Red Wings and Detroit Pistons. So that's going up uh, right now as we speak. Um, and we're doing uh, all of the land design and implementation, IP telephony, uh, IP TV and content development uh, as well as digital signage strategies and trying to bring the right partners to, to bear there. Uh, and we're going to be providing uh, game day support for the first uh, 12 months that the building is open. Um, so project like this, you know, you, you, you might ask uh, how CenturyLink gets involved uh, with, with projects like this. So with this particular project, you know, there was a lot of different things that, that came to bear, but the biggest one was um, the fact that it was a very shortened timeline in which they needed to come up with solution sets and deploy, and they, had a very, they were already over budget. So we came to them based on past projects with a clear path to help them resolve both of those issues, right? So we had, we had, a, we had a strategy on how we could uh, deploy these three technologies on time and actually help them with some of their budgetary, budgetary issues. Um, so that's something that, uh, that we did, and we're looking forward to continuing that project, uh, working with a number of people in this room uh, on some of that. So um, again, we, we view that as a 10-year engagement. If we do this right in phase one, we hope to be part of the whole build out uh, going forward. Uh, US Bank Stadium, home of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, it's also ho hosting Super Bowl 52 this year. Uh, we literally did pretty much every ounce of technology within that building. Um, so most of it involves integration on the back end uh, with, with everything. But you know, again, focus on infrastructure first, right? So LAN, IP telephony, Wi-Fi, and uh, digital signage strategy, right? Then integration with all of that on the back end. So this building right here is, is actually truly a smart building in the fact that everything is on network. Everything from HVAC to lighting 
to you know, wayfinding beacons, the whole deal. Everything is on the network and constantly being monitored, uh, and we helped with the design of all that. So uh, we continually provide support there, and actually they just hired us on to provide support for the Super Bowl, uh, which we couldn't be more happy about. Uh, ASU Sunnyvale Stadium, or in Sunnyvale Stadium and ASU. So ASU, uh, we, we, they utilize us. Uh, we manage the whole campus from a wireless standpoint, uh, over 8,700 8, access, wireless access points. Um, and we're also going to be uh, renovating Sun Devil Stadium and deploying um, wireless access points and digital signage there as well. CenturyLink Center in Omaha, um, and we're also going to be working with TD Ameritrade Park right across the street, home of the College World Series. We just put in a Wi-Fi network there, uh, as well as an analytics portal for them to utilize, um, and we're going to be doing, looking at doing a similar scope there at TD Ameritrade Park. Uh, and again, I touched on Target Field. That was really kind of the cornerstone of what got our practice off and running. Um, but this is kind of where what we did for them there. And, and again, uh, couldn't be more happy with, with that relationship. It continues today. We, they utilize us, our services, still to this day. And we actually recently finished a build out of their uh, spring training facility down in Fort Myers. So that's really it uh, from, a, from a high level uh, on what our go-to-market strategy is, uh, specifically around stadiums and venues and some of the things that we did. Is there any questions? Please feel free. Get a question. Raise your hand if you get a question. Very interesting presentation. Very encompassing. Two terms that we hear a lot in technology have to do with either disruption or the sharing economy. Any thoughts on how that might be um, relevant to the conversation you just gave us? So I'm sorry. I didn't I'm sorry. Disruption. What does disruption mean? At kind of going forward, and also this concept of the sharing economy, maybe from the perspective of users that go to the stadiums? Certainly. Um, <laughs> well, disruption, obviously nobody wants disruption. Um, it's one of those things where you know, technology is going to really kind of lead the way um, going forward, right? All these teams are and venues are looking to leverage technology to really enhance that experience. And, and these are just some of the ways there's other ideas going forward. From a disruption standpoint, you know, some people might view it as a disruption, as well as you know, security from a, a physical disruption standpoint is always going to, going to be key. Um, from a sharing aspect, you know, I, I think yeah, teams are always always trying to understand their fan base better, and they're always willing to. You know, I don't think they're they're I don't think they're going to be physically sharing all of the information that they're getting. But the idea is to share it with your partners, right? So as long as you have the right partners in mind and if you as a patron are willing to offer up your information, then I think that's, that's, probably, that's probably fine. I don't have a problem with it. Some people might, but I, I personally don't. Right, thank you. We have time for one more. Any more questions? Anyone else? All right, then please uh, join me in a round of applause for Jesse Sullivan. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs>